In a previous video, we went over the new primitives tool that's been added to 3D Coat's retopology workspace. Subsequent to that video, there have been some new additions to the default primitives, as well as the capacity to use mesh presets as freeform primitives, just like you can in the Sculpt workspace. So let me demonstrate that. Once more, you've got some new primitives here that you can utilize, or if you want, with the Primitives tool active, you can select any mesh from your Retopo Models preset folder. And by default, you'll have two control points per axis, but you can change these arbitrarily. So let's scrub. Do we have four? And we can enter the value numerically. And you may have seen in the previous video where we were able to quickly align in place our primitive using the brush size where you can scale the brush as well as use the brush stroke direction. So it's going to use the average normals beneath the brush. So let's go ahead and click here. If the rotation is off a bit, you can choose reset axis. If we want to use a standard transform gizmo for the entire object, we can check transform lattice toggle. And now that's just going to give us a general transform gizmo. Let's scale it vertically. All right. And I'll uncheck that. And I want to mention something that's very important. When you use click to place, you want to make sure to uncheck that when you're done. And the reason for that is if you click anywhere else on the object with that still checked, 3D Coat is assuming you want to continue using that quick line feature. So you want to make sure to uncheck that so it does not interfere as you proceed. Okay, so let's now go to a side view here and I'm going to hit the E key to bring the E panel directly to my cursor. If you're new to 3D Coat, you can also access it here just above the tool panel. When you hover in this area, the E panel will open up to you. So I'm going to choose rectangular lasso to select these control points and I may reduce my brush size by hitting my left bracket key just like you would in Photoshop to reduce your brush size. When I hover over the center global scale widget here, when I see it highlighted yellow I can click and drag and it will scale. Now let's push it in. All right. I can hold down the control key and select these back points to deselect them. And now I'm just manipulating this front face here. So again, I'll scale that in. Maybe push it back a bit. And one other very important note is if you want 3D Coat to leave this object in its current low polygon state, then you want to make sure to leave Smooth Primitive unchecked. However, if you want 3D Coat to smooth and subdivide it, then you would check that and you can see the difference. Okay. So, let's leave this unsmoothed. And then just hit Apply. So 3D Coat's going to create a new layer for me as well as applying that mesh to this current layer. Now, currently, as of this video, it can get a little bit confusing because if I try to create a new copy here, it's going to confuse 3D Coat because it's looking to place this object uh, because it's using the name of this mesh preset. It's going to think you want to place it in this same layer. So what you could do is rename this one 01. Now that I've renamed that, when I hit apply, 3D Coat is going to create this new layer for me. So let's go ahead and step out of this primitives tool by clicking something else, like the brush tool. And you can see we have them on separate layers. But again, the reason for that is because 3D Coat is trying to name your layer based on the name of the object. 
So if it sees that there is already a layer with the same name, then it assumes you want to place that mesh inside that layer. And uh, again, that can create a little bit of confusion. Nonetheless, I just wanted to mention that for the new user. Okay, so with that done, you can actually create Booleans with these. You can't do it inside the Retopo workspace as of yet, but there is a way to quickly and instantly get this mesh inside the Sculpt workspace, leave it in the same low polygon state that it's in, perform the Boolean operation, and if we want, we can get right back into the same workspace. So let's look at that. Let's go to the Sculpt workspace. And there is a relatively new feature in the geometry menu called Retopo Mesh to Sculpt Mesh. If you use this feature frequently, you might want to assign a hotkey to it. So if you're new to 3D Coat, you do that by hitting the end key on your keyboard. That's E-N-D. And then you can make the assignment. I chose the R key, so it's easy to remember. Retopo Mesh to Sculpt Mesh. I'll create a new layer and I want to change it to surface mode and the reason why I want it to be in surface mode is so that it comes in exactly in the very same state as in the Retopo workspace. Okay so with that created when I click Retopo Mesh to Sculpt Mesh or hit my hotkey it instantly brings a copy of it into this environment and it creates separate layers for them. I'm going to use a primitive from the Models palette. Let's choose something like this. And I could do the same thing with the primitives tool here in the Sculpt workspace. Nope. Okay, so let's click on our object. I'll use the same thing to click to place. What I want to do is uncheck that, transform entire lattice. And I can use this as a cutting object. So the way to do that is in the tool options panel, you choose add, subtract, intersect, whichever one you want to apply. In this case, we want to subtract and then just hit apply. Now I had the wrong layer selected, so let's make sure we have the right one chosen. Okay, and now with that selected, let's hit apply. We can step out of that tool and see that a Boolean was created. Now let's zoom in and I'm going to hit my wireframe hotkey. I can see I still have this low polygon state. All right, I'll turn that off and we'll do the same thing. Use the primitive tool. Now hit apply. Let's create a new sub layer. So let's go to add, apply. And I'm going to go up here. So I'm going to the parent layer and I'm clicking on this plus icon and that creates again a, a new child layer. And I'm going to hit apply once more. You could also hit the enter key. So we step out of that. So we have our new additions. We came back into the Sculpt workspace in order to perform some Boolean operations. But if we want to get these back into the Retopo workspace, how would we go about doing this? We want it to stay low polygon because we don't want to have to necessarily retopologize these all over again. The way to do that is to drag and drop your layers into the Models palette, and then we can access it from the Retopo workspace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder here. You could create a project or categorized folder by clicking this and then just dragging and dropping your layers into the Models palette. I've already created one. What I'll do is I'll just go ahead and drag and drop these. 3D Coat is going to want to decimate the objects by default, but in this case, if we reduce the decimation percentage to zero, then it will do nothing. It will just send it over exactly as it is. Okay, and 
We'll do the same thing here. And you may want to name these so that they're easy to identify when you go into the Retopo workspace or for future projects. Let's do the same thing here. Drag and drop. 3D Coat remembers the percentage that we last used. So I'll hit OK. And we'll do the same thing for a cube. So what I'm doing is I'm coming over to the right side of the layer and I'll see the little move icon. The 3D Coat hides that whenever you're not hovering over this part of the layer in order to keep things a little bit more tidy and uh, less cluttered. So I'll drag and drop. Same thing. Okay. And the last object. Same thing. Okay. Now that we have these stored, we can reuse these at any feature point. But in this case, we want to use them for retopple meshes. Retopple Models Palette was designed specifically for retopple meshes and to create a little bit of separation so that you don't mix high polygon and low polygon quad meshes together. But you can bring the Models Palette here in the retopple workspace as well. To access it, you can go to the Windows menu under Pop-Ups. Just drag and drop it wherever you like, and it will stay there each time you come back to 3D Coat. Let's hide these other two. In fact, what we can do is just delete those. And I'm going to access the Vox Tree Layer Panel and hide those that are in the Sculpt Workspace. I'll turn my wireframe off. And I'll go back to the Models Palette. So I can click on these objects and they appear just as they were in the scope workspace. I hit apply or the enter key. In this case, I do not want to snap to the voxel object beneath. No. Okay. Let's do the same thing over here. And I'll hit apply. No. Okay. Hit apply. No. Same thing here. Apply. No. And with that, we will conclude this tutorial on the newly added freeform primitive functionality in the Retopo workspace, as well as the ability to model interchangeably between the Retopo and Sculpt environments. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.